Let's trade something. And let's add custom builder trades to Minecraft. More in-depth topics for Minecraft modding available in the 121 modding courses linked below, covering writable and tameable entities, custom entity armor, and even custom entity inventories, among many more awesome topics. All right, we're back to Taylor once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding custom villager trades to our Minecraft mod. Now, you'll find that this is way more straightforward than one might think, because it is simply going to require another event over here. And the idea is that, well, we're just going to add it for both a vanilla villager profession as well as our custom villager profession as well as the wandering trader. So let's start first and foremost and we're going to see this obviously in the mod events class. If you don't have this, then you need to add this as per usual. All of the code is available down below and this is all done in the forge bus very importantly. So for this, of course, we're going to need the custom method and that is as always in the event class over here, a public static void method. I'm going to call this the add custom trades over here. Trades with a villager trades event. I'm going to call this event over here. There we go. I'm going to add the add subscribe event annotation, which is extremely important. This is always going to be needed. The add subscribe event annotation. It has to be public. It has to be static. It has to be void. And then the name, you can call it whatever you want. But then it does need the villager trades event over here as a parameter. And then the question is, how are we going to add these well, trades? Very straightforward. The first thing is we can filter based on the profession. So we're going to say if, and then we're going to say event.get type. So this is going to be the villager profession equals villager profession dot, let's say, farmer over here. So we're going to add something to the farmer within this if statement. And to make this a little bit easier, we're going to have a var over here. This is going to be called trades. Is going to be equal to event.get trades. So this is actually a, uh, what is this? This is a int to object map of a type list of type uh, item listing var. I think that that's actually better. I, I Usually I always wrote it out, but I was like, wait a second. I can just use var. That's way easier in this case. Uh, anyway, how does this work? Well, it's, it's, I'm telling you, it is very straightforward. So it's going to be trades.get. And then here we need to add in an integer. Now this integer represents the level that the villager has to be in order for this trade to be added. In this case, one would be the first level, meaning that we're going to, going to add this to a normal farmer that, you know, basically just runs around. Then we're going to call the add method. And then here, I think we, yeah, we start typing in ptrader and you can see that then an item listing here is suggested to us. We're going to complete it with tab. And then we're going to make a new merchant offer. And this merchant offer is going to have the following things. A new item cost. And this is going to be the item that we basically have to pay for whatever item stack we're going to define. In this case, we're going to say, let's say, five emeralds. And then a new parameter in the merchant offer. This is going to be an item stack. This is what we're going to receive back. So let's say, for example, what items dot kohlrabi dot get. And we're going to get, let's say, nine kohlrabis out of it. Ah, let's say actually like 14. I think that that's a little bit fair. And then we're going to do comma. This is going to be the number of uses. So let's say six uses. Then we're going to have how much experience the trader is going to get. And then the price multiplier. And look at this. Well, if we delete everything, that's not going to be a good look. But look at this. If we then end it with a semicolon over here, then the trade is done. And now the villager has the tr trade of five emeralds for 14 kohlrabi added to its sort of pool. And obviously the trades get randomly selected. So sometimes you might get this and sometimes you might not. So we can, of course, continue with this. And crazily enough, we can also change the item cost here to a different item, right? So we can say, hey, you know what? I want an, an, a diamond over here. And in the item cost, I think we can. I'm not 100% sure. Um, okay, you can even do a data component predicate. So you can make sure that the data component here is different. Um, but it might actually be the case that the merchant offer is a different thing. Yeah, you can um, add different costs over here. So you can see there's an I optional um, item cost over here that you can also add, right? So you, there, you know that there are some things, let's say for the smith, for example, where you give them like, a certain number of emeralds and then also a sword and then it gives you back a diamond, an enchanted sword, for example, right? And that would be then a secondary item cost. You can also do that as per usual, highly recommended to just check out the classes, the base classes, and then usually you can figure it out hopefully from there. Uh, let's also change this to, let's say, the, the honey berries over here, though. Honey berries, and let's say that we actually get like, I don't know, 32. And that's going to be three diamonds. And then lastly, we're going to duplicate this one more time to also show that the second level, right? So if we change the get right here, then of course we can also add well, trades to the second level, right? When they are second level, and then here we can do all sorts of crazy things. I don't even know. Items dot. Let's go crazy, okay? 
He will, I mean, Bedrock would be a little... That would be a little bit too crazy, even... Maybe a bell, okay? He wants a bell, and he's going to give you for it... What can he give you for it? A Triceratops spawn egg. No. Let's just do Aurora Ashes. Why not? Right, and that's like a crazy thing, but it gives way more experience for it. Just for the sake of argument. As per usual, with all of the numbers, you can always change those around. That is always a thing that you can do. And now to add this to our custom villager, very straightforward. We're just going to duplicate the entire if statement over here. And then here in the event, get type. In the if statement, we're going to say this is now equal to villagers.carpenter.value. No, that get, that get actually, that get. Uh, I think, no, that, get, that value does not work, but that get does work. And we can see that the rest basically just works. So now we've added the exact same trays over here. Of course, we're going to change those up just a little bit. Let's say, for example, a chisel over here. We're going to get a chisel for like 12 diamonds, or for 12 emeralds, rather. And then here, we're going to get maybe not honey berries for three diamonds, but maybe we put in like 19 diamonds and we get a, a tomahawk. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's let's go freaking crazy. And then here, maybe a bell, maybe, a, a, maybe an emerald again, and we're going to get a radiation staff out of it. There we freaking go. Okay, there we go. Right, and that's how you can basically do this and of course how you can also change this right like i said any of the numbers you can always change those those are super easy to change so highly recommended to just play around with this a little bit when it comes to the wandering trader i'm actually just going to copy over the entirety of the method here in this case because it's uh, it's basically almost the same of course once again it's a public static void then add wandering trades with the wanderer trades event with an add subscribe event annotation very important as per usual, the code is available down below in the GitHub repository, and you'll see that the trader has a little bit of a different way of that it works. It has generic trades and rare trades. I think it has like six generic trades and two rare trades every time you open, like any time a wandering trader appears. I think that's the split. Don't quote me on that, but I think that that should, that sounds right. And of course, that means that the rare trades are going to be rare, and the generic ones are going to be, well, I mean, more likely to show up, basically. But yeah, that's basically it, and that's all we need to do. There's zero other things that we need to do in this case. Uh, I believe at some point, I think that the immersion offer is already, yeah, it's already a codec. So in theory, I think it could also be added with JSON files. It might also be the case that in future versions, the trades events are going to be replaced with a way that it's going to be added via JSON files. But for the time being, we're fine with this. The events work in, well, they 100% work in 1.21.1. The other versions, I still do not know, as they are, there's changes upon changes, it is absolutely crazy. But, let's not focus on that, let's rather jump into the game and see if we can trade. Alright, fans, we're back in Minecraft, and I have some selection of our traders. Now, what we obviously find is that the Cowpenter over here, well, it has the trades that we have defined, because, well, there's no other trades available. However, when it comes to the farmers, sometimes they have our trades, sometimes they do not. In this case, it had like, this guy has the Kohlrabi, and let's see if he like upgrades to a new level it does not have the second level however this guy obviously could have the second level of course we need to give him freaking beetroot out here uh to actually upgrade and another bit of wheat okay sure of course let's just hope that he actually gets the gets the desired trade over here in level two and of course he does not you are absolutely useless my man okay but regardless of this you can see that the trades are added Absolutely freaking fantastic, and if we were to spawn a couple of uh, Wandering Traders, uh, well, that's gonna, might take a while, because the Wandering Traders pool is quite, um, it's, like, there's actually quite a few uh, trades in here. Uh, let's see, there it is, so this is the rare trade, as you can see, so we have the rare trade for the Barbara Music Disc, and then the generic trade was for, uh, I don't even quite remember what it was for, I think our, um, there it is, the radiation stat. It, it literally took this many freaking wandering traders until I got the radiation staff. That is crazy, though. Okay, but there it is. That's the radiation staff as well. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is custom trades added to villagers. And as I've said before, and I will continue to say again, uh, all of the code is available to you down below in the GitHub repository. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about particles. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.